Okay then, let's kick off with uh, the course contents. So first of all, we talk about the two textbooks that we're going to use in this course. The first book is Data Mining Techniques by Linoff and Berry. Uh, and the second book is Data Mining with Rattle and R by Graham Williams. Now the first book, which is the book uh, on the left of the screen, uh, gives you a very business oriented introduction to the various techniques that we'll be talking about in the course. It doesn't cover all the techniques, but it covers some of the techniques. I'm not entirely satisfied with the book, uh, but you know that's the best we could do. I didn't want to go into a book that was highly mathematics oriented. Instead, I wanted a book with a business focus, and this was really the best I could find. Uh, so we will rely on this book for gaining an intuitive understanding of the techniques. And of course, I'll supplement with my own explanations and handouts and so on, and I hope thus those two things will suffice. The second book, which is Data Mining with Rattle and R, is the book that we'll be using essentially to understand how to use the software tools for the course. We are going to be using a software package called R, which is uh, which has become the default standard software package for statistical analysis all over the world. It's open source, but it's very high quality. And within that, there's another package specifically built for data mining, and that's called Rattle. So those are the two tools that we'll be using in the course. And this book, uh, the Graham Williams book, gives you a good introduction, a hands-on introduction on how to use the tools. Not just an introduction, but it's built for the Rattle tool. So that's what we'll be doing in the course. OK, so before we launch off into the course itself, let's try and understand what is business intelligence and what are the components of business intelligence. OK, now the term business intelligence over the last decade or so has come to mean uh, essentially extracting actionable intelligence from the vast mass of data that organizations gather when they conduct business. After all, these days, all business transactions, by that I mean, you know, placing a sales order, a company making a purchase, making a purchase order, or inside the company, somebody is issuing raw materials, somebody is withdrawing, uh, you know, depositing this, all kinds of activities that are performed in an organization, you're making a payment, you're receiving a payment, everything is recorded in computers. And therefore, all of this information is stored in relational databases within the organization. Now, over the years, what happens is that a huge amount of such data is gathered. And until recently, organizations have not been making very good use of this vast mass of data that's available. Business intelligence these days has come to refer to the process by which we use all of this accumulated information and try and unearth underlying trends and patterns and things like that, which are not immediately obvious uh, when you just look at day-to-day -day business. So it's the use of tools and techniques to extract intelligence from the vast mass of data that organizations gather. And technically speaking, there are two components within business intelligence. The first, of course, is to even get the data out of the relational databases in which the operational data is stored. By operational data, I mean data about the various transactions that a company conducts. So all of that is stored in a relational database, but that relational database is actually designed for operational efficiency. It's not designed with a view to be able to analyze the data effectively. Right? That is because when you're conducting transactions, you want those transactions to be efficient. Consider an Amazon.com. When you're interacting with an Amazon.com from your browser, Amazon would like the browser, would like the application to be highly responsive. And all of those databases are really designed for that kind of responsiveness. Unfortunately, a database designed for that purpose is not particularly useful for actually conducting analysis of data. So the first step in business intelligence is really to take the data out of this relational database and get the data into a form that is suitable for managerial analysis. And that process 
has now come to be referred to as data warehousing. And there are lots of tools and techniques available for data warehousing. The second part of business intelligence is once you have created a data warehouse, once you have taken out the relevant data from the operational database and created that data in a form that is suited for analysis, the second step is to actually perform the analysis. And that is usually referred to as data mining. Okay, so there are two components for uh, in business intelligence. One is data warehousing, the other is data mining. And normally speaking, both of these are typically not covered in one single course. Each is more or less a subspeciality within the field of business intelligence. And in fact, even in practice, you will find that some people are experts at data warehousing and some people are experts at data mining. In this course, we will actually be focusing on the latter aspect, which is the data mining aspect. So for this course, we will actually assume that the data extraction process, the data warehousing process has already been completed. And we now have the data in a form that is suitable for analysis. And we'll be learning various techniques for analysis of the data using data mining. So that really is the focus of our present course. The syllabus, I've posted the syllabus on Blackboard. I'm not going to go through the syllabus step by step in this presentation. However, I really urge you to read the syllabus. Now, one thing that I've noticed time and again while conducting courses in Seton Hall is that people somehow tend not to read posted material. So for whatever reason, they people tend to look just at the lectures and look at, you know, the assignments, even that not very closely and just somehow get something done. That really will not do at all, uh, even more so because this is an online course. Most of our communication is going to be done either through lectures like this or through written documents, handouts, and other things that I give you. And when I give you a document to read, everything I put in that document is important. Otherwise, I would not take the time and effort to actually put stuff in the document for you to read. So I really, really implore you to carefully read everything that I post. And of course, that starts with the syllabus. So please take a look at the syllabus, understand what is involved in the course, you know, understand what are the various components on which you will be graded, understand my approach to teaching, and of course, the various topics that we'll be taught, uh, that we'll be covering in the course and so on. So please do that. In terms of the mechanics of the course, of course, if it's a face to face class, then a lot of discussion will be conducted inside the classroom with the occasional email exchange to clarify points. But since this is an online course, we have to rely on very serious and involved online discussions. Now, when somebody has a question in a the classroom, they ask the question, I answer it. And everybody else in the classroom has also had an opportunity to listen to the question and the answer. Now, in an online course, when somebody has a question, if they send me an email and I answer the question for them, it's only the person who got the email that gets the response. The rest of the class doesn't get the response. And of course, it's soon another person is going to ask the same question and so on and so forth. Right. So this is not a very efficient way to operate just to work through email. And therefore, I decided that we really use a discussion board for this kind of discussions. So when a question is asked on the discussion board, I answer the question, that question and answer, though both of them are now available for the entire class to take a look at. Now, unfortunately, I have not found the discussion board on Blackboard to be really useful. It doesn't have great search capabilities. And therefore, I've decided that for this course, I'm going to use the Google Groups facility. And I've already created a Google group for the course. And I've added each of you as members of that group. And you would have seen an email on this. Uh, but I've added you with your Seton Hall email ID, which is perfectly fine. You can use the group with your Seton Hall email ID. All you have to do is to go follow the link and create an account for yourself. Your 
uh, your login username will be your Seton Hall user ID, uh, your Seton Hall email ID, and you can select a password. That'll work fine. But of course, I'm aware that almost all of you have Google accounts, and you might prefer to work uh, in the, you know, to access the group through your Google account. If that is the case, please send me your Google email ID and I'll send an email on this out. Send me your Google email ID and I'll add you to the group with your Google email ID. That way, you're probably already logged into Gmail all the time if you have a Google account and therefore, you wouldn't have to log in again to get into the group because with your Google account, when you go to groups.google.com, you can say my groups and it'll show you this course because you're already a member of that group and you can go directly into the group and interact without having to log in again. Okay, so that's your preference and you can access the group either with your Seton Hall email ID or with your Google email ID or with both because I'll be adding you with both. So it's your choice. Okay, so that's the important point. You need to, of course, get onto the group really quickly. Uh, and another important point about the Google Groups thing, some points to think about. One is before you post a question, of course, first of all, I want you to post all questions only on the Google Groups forum. Please don't email me any questions. I would prefer that you ask the question in the Google Groups forum. The reason is you ask the question, I answer it. The question and answer are now available to everybody else. If you send it, send an email and I respond to you, then I'll have to do that for every student in class. And with such a large class, I really don't want to be wasting my time doing that. I would much rather spend my time making the course more useful and more effective for you. Okay, so please check whether the question has already been answered. And if so, you've got your answer. If not, of course, please go ahead and ask the question. Uh, and of course, Google Groups provides you excellent search facilities. So it should be easy for you to, to search and find out whether the question has already been asked and answered. Another important capability of the Google Groups uh, is whenever you post, you can add a tag to the post. Okay, so that way, uh, it'll make it easier for people to search for material that is posted. They can search by the tags. And of course, what I'll also do is to create threads for every session. So if you have a question related to a particular session or a particular topic, please try and post it within the appropriate thread. So that way, again, things will be categorized nicely. If you just post something randomly in the wrong thread and so on, then it'll make it difficult for people to find. It's more or less like going to a library, uh, taking out a book and you know misplacing the book somewhere else. And after that, nobody will be able to find the book. The book might be lost for years together. So that's really why uh, you would I would like you to post any question on the appropriate thread. If you think there's not an appropriate thread to post it, create a new thread and post your question within that thread. It just makes things a little more organized, okay? So once again, another very important point is we should not treat this Google group as a forum for students to ask questions and for the instructor to answer the questions. I really would like a rich discussion among the whole group. So it should not be a one-way communication or at least all communications directed at the instructor and the instructor communicating with everybody else. I want rich communication among the whole group. And therefore, what I'll really try to do is when somebody asks a question, I'm not going to immediately jump in and answer the question. Unless, of course, the question is about something about the course mechanics or something like that. When is the assignment due kind of stuff? Those things I can answer because, you know, those are administrative questions. But non-administrative questions, questions related to the subject matter, questions related to, let's say, how to use a particular software feature, things like that. What I would really like to do is for people to ask the questions and for other students as far as possible to try and answer those questions. Okay, I'm going to give ample time for other students to jump in and answer the question. And if for a long time, let's say a couple of days, the question is on, not answered, then I might jump in and either answer the question or most likely pose another question that will help you to find the answer for yourself. Okay. Now, my philosophy of teaching and learning, and which I think is supported by all uh, education research, is that there is no way I can pour knowledge into your head. 
okay you learn something only by yourself your brain constructs knowledge for itself it is impossible for somebody outside to come and pour knowledge into your head all they can do is to create the environment and facilitate the process of learning for you ultimately you are the one who is performing the process of learning you are constructing your own knowledge based on your understanding based on your experience and based on your efforts so as far as possible what i would like to do is to allow you to find answers rather than just me giving the answers okay so uh, that's going to be my philosophy so i would like a rich interaction between all of you and i would like you to arrive at answers for yourself uh, so this is what i'm saying in the third picture which is that my lips are going to be sealed for a very long time and i'll finally open up only after i found that uh, the answers have not for uh, have not uh, come about from within the group and you will also notice that in the syllabus i have an item called active learning and i'm going to base the active learning grade on your useful contribution to the group okay now of course i i'm not a great fan of attaching everything to a grade because i believe that you should not be studying for a grade instead you should be studying to learn however it's a necessary evil within our system that we have to have grades and so on and that is why we've got the grading stuff in the course and I've, i have to link it to something and therefore active learning is one thing that i have used here other than of course the usual tests and assignments so the active learning part of the grade is going to really come from how you contributed meaningfully to the discussions either by asking good questions or by being able to answer other people's questions help other people and so on and so forth so let's think of it not as a a uh, process by which at the end of which you have a grade the grade i would think is completely incidental this is really a process when uh, whereby at the end of the process you've got some really useful knowledge practical knowledge that you are ready to apply that is really what we want and it's not a competition between all of you in fact the more we cooperate and collaborate the more all of us learn including me because a lot of your questions will get me thinking and going along certain directions exploring things that i would never have done otherwise okay so it's very important that we create a collaborative environment where we all learn